Alrighty, how much do we judge people by how they look? Well, a lot, according to a Chicago woman, Lena Suleiman. The Muslim woman found out that uh, people treated her totally differently when she covered up her traditional hijab. Non-Muslim women started speaking to her and men began looking at her while Muslims became distant and silent. Lena joins us now from Chicago. Lena, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I guess the first question is, what made you decide to undertake such a social experiment? Good morning. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, it actually, it was an accidental experiment. I didn't intend for it to happen. It was basically the Chicago weather that made me wear the hat and the scarf that ended up covering up my hijab. And I didn't know that I didn't appear Muslim anymore you... until it finally hit me at some point when I realized that people just don't know that I'm Muslim. So it wasn't intentional. Lena, you actually have the cover-up that you were wearing with you at the moment. Can you show us what it looks like? Sure. I have the... Here's the scarf. I'm going to have to be careful so I don't uh -huh. cover yeah. up the mic. <laughs> Wow. So I would cover up like that because it was really cold. And then my hat would go on top. Mm. And you might see wow. a little bit of scarf, but it's negligible. No, no. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. can. <laughs> and, uh, OK, great. <laughs> and so, so this is basically what I looked like every day. And people just didn't know that I was Muslim. And, and previously, you'd be going around the hijab. Had you thought that people were treating you differently when you were wearing the hijab before that? Or did you think, oh, this is just how people treat everybody? Yeah, I just thought everybody was... I mean, everybody's nice here in Chicago. I haven't been someone who's exposed to much racism. I'm very blessed. Uh, so I didn't think people could just be nicer. So uh, the, the biggest realisation for me was when I would interact with people they wouldn't be as confused as to why I'm speaking with them anymore. And they would interact with me very normally. And it, they were extra nice. And men were extra nice. And it, it was just a, a very different level of niceness that I didn't know existed. Did that shock you and surprise you? It was a little shocking, uh, but it wasn't surprising. Because uh, it did, it, it just it basically took for me to appear to other people to not be Muslim for me to just be exposed to that kind of difference in treatment. But um, a lot of my friends and colleagues have, who are Muslim have shared stories with me on you know, things that happened to them like that and why they've been treated differently because of their hijab. I simply never recognized the difference until a whole city started treating me better based on my hat and my scarf. Which way would you prefer to be treated? I prefer to be treated nicely by everybody. So um, if you don't mind me taking this off, because it's not too cold in here. <laughs> um, I prefer to be treated uh, the, nicely by everybody. So I prefer to get the same treatment from cab drivers as I do when they recognize that I'm Muslim. And I prefer to get hijabis to recognize I'm Muslim and to say salam, peace, back to me and to smile back at me. I also prefer for people to feel comfortable to come up to me, ask me a question, why the train is late, you know, which direction should I go? I'm lost in the city, I'm, you know, I'm new or, um, you know, so I prefer that everybody just is nicer to everyone. So I think that is the reason the story went so far, my experience went so far is because it was a realization on both sides. I would certainly uh, it wasn't like. Just... Um, I would like everyone to be nice to each other as well, Lena. But is it really so surprising that when you wear the hijab, which obviously is entirely your choice, and I think very few people have any problem with it at all, but it is an expression of your Muslim identity. Is it any surprise that when you do wear it, that Muslims are more open and more communicative with you, and non-Muslims are not, and and that the opposite happens when it's covered up and, and you, you find that Muslims aren't as responsive to you when you're wearing the hat and scarf, but that other people were. Doesn't that just kind of make sense that you're, you're identifying yourself as part of a, a tribe that other people who aren't part of it might kind of think, well, that's not really something I'm in on, and people who are think, hey, you know, welcome to the club, sister. Right. I have, um, I guess, two responses to that, and they both have to do with knowledge and familiarity. So one is, uh, it's okay to feel more comfortable with certain people, um, but it's not okay to continue to exclude or treat other people less, um, less nicely because they are different from you. So it's okay to have that initial reaction, 
because we're human and that's natural, but we also have natural inclinations towards aggression or uh, exclusion, and, and those are not okay. So it's a matter of, of breaking those barriers, not allowing yourself to continue to feel like this person is just from another world and uh, I don't need to be connected to them. And then the second thing I would say is um, when I put this on, I don't put it on to tell the world, I'm Muslim, I'm different, I don't want to be a part of you. This is a part of my um, of me following what God has told me to do. And it really has, to me, has no physical value. It's all spiritual. So I forget that I have it on. It doesn't, it doesn't have to say Muslim on it. It doesn't, it doesn't say that I'm Muslim. Some people wear, cover their hair because of the weather. Um, I just have a different intention. And um, in itself, it's not, uh, it's not a divine piece of cloth. It's, uh, it's serving a purpose that's not visible. It's not physical. So I want to be treated for who I am and not what I look like. Because and I think everybody should do that. It is a spiritual thing that's all about protecting your modesty. Is that right, Lena? It, it, it's, just, it, it's bizarre and crazy that this great sense of fear um, comes from a piece of cloth. <laughs> It is, it is, um, and it comes Where do you from think lack it comes of knowledge. From? Knowledge, so, yeah. Can I just clarify, I think, Lennon? I think it, Did, have you, have you, sorry, you have been excluded when you've been wearing the hijab, so I misunderstood. I thought you said that people were uh, completely nice to you and friendly all the time, but that it, it escalated or elevated when the hijab was covered, but you have noticed exclusion, have you? I have. Um, in college and at one of my workplaces, I've noticed that um, because I don't drink, um, so I wouldn't go to happy hour, People will treat me much differently. The moment I tell them I can't go with you because I, I don't want to and, and I don't want to drink, you know, there's, there was a huge difference in the way they would treat me right after. And um, in college, too, it was, uh, it was difficult for me to sort of break in and become a part of the crowd when everybody just wanted to, you know, if you don't party with them, then you're not one of them. And that's not my outlook on life. It's let me be a part of, you know, the things that I agree with. And what I don't agree with, just let me live that life. Well, Lena, it's such an interesting uh, social experiment and hopefully it would go some way in breaking down those uh, ridiculous barriers that still exist. Uh, thank you very much for joining us live from Chicago there. Thank you so much for having me. What a bright, articulate oh, young woman. Fabulous yeah. young woman. Yeah. And she makes such a valid point. Um, but interesting, Joe, what you were mm. saying, because I must say, from my perspective, when I see women covered, I instantly um, sort of... Not step back, but I but I, I, I make judgments based on that, mm. and I don't think that's fair. No, mm. oh, I think yeah. to what you know Lena was saying, but I do make assumptions about what that person I, must I be like. I think the assumption or... people make is that people that we're not we're not all similar. Mm. I mean, that young girl is no different really from any of the, any mm. of us. She simply wears a different headscarf. Yes, and you know that that's that's mm. the lesson we all have to learn mm. out of this. That we're mm. all human beings. Mm. We all we all need to be. We all need to feel part of the community in which we live. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well said, Ita.